Oh boy, oh boy, buckle up. We got CPI Wednesday coming tomorrow. Well, back to work tonight, guys. Tuesday evening, getting ready for a very big day, possibly the biggest day uh, of the month of April so far. Uh, CPI report Wednesday, inflation data coming tomorrow. Everyone's been waiting on it. We have a lot to cover tonight, right? Expecting some very big moves in the markets tomorrow, which means we got some reversals on our mind, some breakouts on our mind. We have a lot of great trades to get ready for tonight. And you know me, I'm going to cover all my favorite trade ideas in the video tonight that we get a game plan to make some money, no matter how wild the market gets around that CPI report tomorrow morning. Uh, before we jump in, and get the video going tonight. Make sure you subscribe to our channel. That way you don't miss tomorrow night's video upload. And if you enjoyed the video tonight, if you enjoy these, these video lessons, hit that like button. Give me a shout out in the comment section below. Appreciate you guys tuning in, supporting the channel, watching the video tonight. But enough of the intro, right? Wednesday is not going to trade itself. Where are the best trades setting up for CPI inflation Wednesday? Really the, the biggest news report of the week and, and probably the biggest news report uh, of the month here. Boy, there must be a big news event tomorrow, right? Because the markets are range bound on the S&P and the NASDAQ. Uh, again, we're anticipating some pretty big moves off of this CPI report. I've got some, definitely have some reversals, some range reversals, some range breakouts. There could be a ton of head fakes. And so we're going to talk about, it's kind of funny tonight because we have a bullish range on the S&P, a bearish range on the NASDAQ, but they both kind of tell you the same basic thing. And I'll talk about why I say that tonight. I'm going to make it very easy for you to have a game plan to make some money in the NASDAQ and the S&P tomorrow. So uh, uh, we'll, we'll talk more details in a moment. Over on oil, oil's the hardest one, I think, out of all of them. We're very bullish on oil right now, but we're sitting right at some significant areas of resistance. The bears make it a great reversal off the high, but I have some ideas to kind of pick those pockets, get those bear traps for another leg higher. So we're going to talk about oil. We definitely have a lot to cover on the oil as well. So you want to make sure you stay tuned and watch the entire video tonight. Now, before we jump in and get into the reversals and the breakouts and the, and the head fakes, let's get, all get on the same page for tomorrow because we got some big news coming tomorrow on Wednesday morning, uh, April the 12th. The big news tomorrow is that CPI number coming at 8.30 Eastern time. We'll hear from Thomas Barkin a few minutes afterwards. We'll get the weekly inventory report at 10.30. We're going to hear from Mary Daly and Possibly the next biggest news report is that FOMC meeting minutes uh, tomorrow afternoon. Everybody, Everybody's watching the CPI number. Now, if you've learned one thing from watching these videos, we talk about news. Remember, the news is noise. It really doesn't matter what the number comes out as tomorrow, right? I'm not going to waste time by speculating if it's up, if it's down, higher or lower. That's a waste of energy. The best use of our time tomorrow is, is we know when the news is coming out. Right, 8.30, the market will probably whip around for a while. We trade the reaction, right? We trade the reaction. So I'm not going to waste any time tonight or tomorrow and say if it's higher or if it's lower. It's that th those, th those mental gymnastics are not going to help you make money. What helps you make money is, is know when the news is, wait for the news to come out, and we'll trade the reaction tomorrow morning uh, in our morning trade room. We open up at 8 o'clock Eastern time, so the front row seat for that CPI number. Things do get pretty wild around that number, right? So don't be afraid to sit on hands for a little while, wait for things to calm down, and then trade the reaction, and we'll do it tomorrow morning. Again, I would also imagine, too, the FOMC minutes uh, tomorrow afternoon might be round two of the fireworks, and uh, we got more big news coming later this week, too. So this week is just getting warmed up. Got PPI tomorrow. We got bank earnings coming on Friday morning. I'm, I'm getting excited just talking about here right now. Okay, back to our charts though. You know the news is for tomorrow. We're not going to get wrapped up in what if it's higher or what if it's lower. The money is made on the charts. And of course, I'm going to go over all my favorite trades on each of these charts here in the video tonight. If you like making money, I would definitely make sure you watch all the way to the end because uh, I'm, I'm going to give you guys different trade ideas that can apply to whatever your favorite market is. So uh, all these trades will apply to your favorite market. Let's go S&P first. We'll go NASDAQ and we'll wrap things up 
on the mighty crude oil. Um, as always, guys, there's tick charts. That's a 7,000 tick chart in the upper left-hand corner. They're all tick charts uh, here on the videos here tonight. This is the 21 EMA, exponential moving average. And you know how we roll. I always like to give you guys some higher time frames uh, linked up in the description of the video. I got a 60-minute chart down there. I got four-hour time frames. I like to use the 60-minute chart for my directional bias, kind of the lens in which I look at these markets through and the four hour chart gives me some great turning points uh, to work with. So grab the links in the description if you want to see a good companion uh, with the video here tonight. What's the most important thing affecting the S&P right now? Well, first of all, we are overall bullish overall, right? Go check out that 60 minute time frame below and you'll see it's this is not a bear market. It's a bull market overall. And so that is going to be the lens in which I look at this. I'm going to filter my trades, right, based on that overall bull bias. The next most important factor, and really what really is the most important factor in the chart, is this trading range. This is a bullish move into a trading range. Now, ranges act like magnets. And so whenever we see a bullish move into a trading range, we have to think that buyers, knowing that that range will act like a magnet, knowing we have an overall bullish directional bias, you've got to be thinking that support levels, support levels, love this big channel, right? That support level, you've got to be thinking that buyers are going to be trying to buy that nice deep pullback, right? Off support levels, use that range as a magnet. That is definitely one of my favorite trades uh, here for tomorrow. And it might get a bit scary because of the CPI report. So we're going to definitely kind of unpack that a little bit more here tonight. We also know too, we also know too that ranges love to rotate. So for example, we have this range now going up or the price going up, we should be trying to rotate roughly equal, right, to the amount we went above there. That, of course, is an area of support. The reason why I mention this is because if for some reason we did not get that rotation, right, if for some reason we didn't, if for some reason the market runs higher, right, we call this failed rotation, and when you combine that with an overall bull bias, what does it do? It opens the door for breakouts, right? And so there's a couple breakout patterns we're going to keep our eyes on here as well, right? So that failed rotation, that makes sense, right? That failed rotation, this is why I say ranges are some of the most important clues you can look for because they tell you a lot. Buyers would love to get up and punch out that 41, 71 and three quarters. They got some more big levels overhead, but let's 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 uh, let's take one chunk out of that 41, 71 and three quarters. That's of course what they want. So knowing that, right? Overall bull bias, bullish into a trading range and also expecting some <laughs> some fireworks, right? Expecting some some pretty big moves here. Uh, I would be thinking the low of this channel would be a really, really good good place uh, to look for longs here. And so my what what you want to think about now is one last thing here with this move, right? With this rotation, if we end up going lower, we call this rotation off the high. All right, I want to make sure I point that out as well, okay? Rotation off the high. We go up and we rotate lower. The reason why this is important is because this creates a lot of momentum, right? It creates a, it creates this big kind of swing running lower and all that momentum. So I want to be a buyer, right? I want to be a buyer. The problem, though, is if we swing off of this high, that's a lot of what? It's a lot of bearish momentum. So if we're going against the short-term momentum, what I want to do is I want to use well, we need some sort of catalyst, right, to get that pullback to turn around. This is exactly where uh, failure patterns are going to come in handy. What I'd like to do is, is get down into these areas of support and, you know, be aware, I'm going to do my best tonight, but that CPI number tomorrow really creates a lot of question marks, right? It could be here. It could be here. It could be all the way down here for all I know, right? could be a pretty deep pullback, uh, again, in the wake of that CPI number. Either way, I'd like to get this thing underneath that trade range, 
Okay, now remember, a lot of bearish momentum off the high. I have to anticipate the sellers are probably not going to go without a fight. I want to buy, but I have to wait for the bears to kind of dig their own grave. And to do that, I like to use what I call a failure pattern, just like you guys are learning in the free trading course. But this is where you want to use a two-try failure. And it's all because of that rotation right off the high here. So once those bears try a couple times, then I can use their stock right remember the easiest money you're ever going to make is when you got the bears trapped there's a range above us overall bull bias that would be a great way to buy off of this low a two try failure at support right at one of these support levels underneath now Let's talk about some variations of this because oftentimes you'll get these rotations off the high. They make these very strong run lower. The bears are strong at that point. They come in and they retest the low, right? They may come in. They may try a couple times and retest that low. What do you do then? Well, at that point now, kind of the big money bears, right? They've taken their, they've, they've got short. They're going to take their profit likely at that low. And this is where you can go do it again, right? We call these double bottom reversals. They're pretty much the same thing, right? I still want to be a buyer. Again, long-term bull bias. I'm at support below the trading range, right? But now when they retest the low, again, let them try once, let them try twice, use their stops. The reason why you want to use stops as fuel is because at this point, even though we're still overall bullish, right, it's still very bearish in the short term. And so if I don't have momentum on my side, right, if momentum is working against me, I need some sort of fuel, right, to turn this thing around, right? So as we go lower, I'm looking for that one, two back up, right? Looking for that double bottom, one, two back up. Now, there's one more variation of this that I want you guys to be aware of, and that's the V bottom, right? So V bottoms are pretty common, especially during news events. If we do get a real shake going lower, and let's say there are so many buyers down here that we don't get any type of bear trap signal to buy back up again. Sometimes what happens is the market will V bottom and begin to grind and grind and grind. These can be painful, right? Because you're like, all right, give me a chance. You know, give me a chance to get in down here and it doesn't give you a chance, right? The one thing about these kind of V bottoms where it V bottoms off that low and gets to grind, don't chase it. That's one of the keys here. What we want to do is we want to draw a trend line off the high, market off the low. And then like we always say, right? You want to look left, find some prior swings and look for things like trap setups like you guys are learning in the free trading course, uh, failure patterns, right? Below the moving average, pullback combinations. Again, we call this the price action cycle, right? You guys are learning this in the free video series, right? So bear trap below prior swings, failure pattern, pullback pattern. Where, the, where, where, do, the, where do the buyers want to go, right? They want to go all the way back up now and, and take out that high. So although this isn't the most desirable of scenarios, you know, again, sometimes things get, get wild and weird, right? If it pops and grinds, don't miss that first test with any of the entry patterns you guys are learning in the free trading course. Which reminds me, I know you guys are loving the free video series, right? I get so many great emails every week about people using the traps and the failure patterns to make money on their own account. But if you're one of the few folks right now watching who haven't taken the free classes yet and learned all these entry tactics, I'll put a link here for you in the upper right-hand corner. Grab that link and take that free trading course because a strategy that you'll learn in that video series will show you a simple, simple trick to know exactly where the best winning trades are going to be that day and I'll help you start making money on your own by teaching my four favorite entry patterns. Uh, if you're missing the best trades right now, if you're taking too many losses, definitely grab that link. Take that free trading course. You'll learn all about, you'll learn all about deep pullbacks, trapping bears in, using stops as fuel. And we'll also talk about too, right? Those V bottoms, how to draw those channels, right? How to draw those channels, right? And grab those traps, failure patterns, pullback patterns, right? And use range. We, we do a lot of work with ranges in that free trading course. All right. So those are my favorite trades uh, as we as we go lower. Now, how about going higher? Because, you know, as I mentioned earlier, if we fail that rotation, 
right? Doesn't seem likely right now, but who knows? Who knows, right? If we don't get that rotation back down and the market now breaks higher, look we have here, right? We have what looks to be, it could be a smaller channel, right? Could be easily a smaller channel holding off this area. We might get a breakout off the news event going higher. Now, when it comes to breakouts going higher, we, we talked about this last night um, on the video. What you want to think about is, is if we do get that rush going higher, you want to be very aware of buying too high. And so as we go higher, if we can get that strong rush going higher on the way up, we're looking for trap entries. I call these, I call these two, these call these two try traps. Okay, they're very, very simple. If we see a very strong move up, a shallow pullback in price, right? Shallow pullback, it'll barely touch the moving average and a higher high in price, right? So again, it'll go like this, right? Strong move, it'll be a shallow pullback that'll drive all the pullback traders crazy. The higher high in price will confirm it's not just a V top, right? Back down into that range, which in all reality, it could be. And if it does do that, by the way, if it fake out breakouts, right? Pendulum, pendulum, right? And we're still looking at the same basic idea. Make, make sense, right? Okay, so if we, while we're running higher, right? If we end up running higher here, you're looking for those, again, this would be a bear trap, right? A trap low as we go higher. And again, the reason behind that is you just want to buy high, right? A lot of momentum. We have a good idea of where the market is hunting for at that point. I want to get in as low as I possibly can. All right. And again, this will be a pretty strong, it'll be a very poppy move, right? You'll and again, it will it will confirm with shallow pullback, higher high, and the trap low. Okay. Keep that on your radar, right? Don't get suckered into buying high if it runs up and crashes right back down again. All right. Be aware there will likely be some tricks tomorrow or on the CPI number. Now, once we start getting up around this bullish objective, right? Once we start getting up around major resistance, now we have to assume that all the buyers who bought here and bought here, they're going to be taking some profit. Okay, when, when, when we get to an area where we anticipate profit taking, we now begin to wait for a deeper pullback. Okay, this is where finding channels comes in handy. I'm now going to go out and look at things like these highs, connect off these highs, right? Anticipate, right? It's a little bit higher up at this point. I'm going to go in, take that high, copy it down to that low, right? And then now let them take profit, right? Let them take profit. Okay, once they take profit now, remember, this is a very strong move going higher. We've already got an overall bull bias on the chart right now because that 60 minute chart. If I have a long term bull bias and a strong, strong short term move, what did we talk about last night? Anytime we see a strong move in one direction, we expect a pullback and a retest of that level, right? So if we get that strong punch higher, there's a bullseye right at the retest of this high. And remember, keep in mind, I'm just I'm making an educated guess, right? This could be a little bit higher. It could be a bit lower, right? It could blow right through that bullish objective. But if we have this very, very strong move, the odds of getting that pullback to retest the high are pretty darn good, right? They're pretty darn good. The trick, though, is, is you want to get underneath the moving average, start to trap in some of these bears, right, and use their stops as fuel for a failure, a pullback combo, right? And again, look for that run back up to retest the high. And oftentimes, it'll be the first leg, the third leg will be used for your target, all right? So a quick recap on that, right? As we go higher, if we get that strong blast going higher, we know the market wants to go. We're looking for bear traps on on the way higher, right? Once we get up around some of these key areas of resistance where we expect professionals to be taking profit, what do we do? We back off, we don't buy way up here. We mark off the highs, we find channels off the lows, we wait for that profit taking, we get underneath the moving average, right? Let the bears try a couple times, right? Get them, get them trapped in. That way their stops make for great gasoline, right? Great fuel for that run up and we punch it right back to retest the high, okay? Now, uh, after big moves, right, what happens? After big moves, we oftentimes see ranges. So we'll keep an eye out for a range up there. If we see a range up there, we'll start looking to buy, right, off the support below the trading range, right? Just like this is a bull move into a range, want to buy off support below it. If we end up seeing a range develop overhead here, same idea, right? If we were to pop up and go sideways, right, pop up and go sideways into a bull range, what do you do? 
Yeah, you're exactly right. You mark up support. You mark up support. You wait for that pullback. You trap in those bears, right? And you use their stops as fuel. It's the same exact game plan we just talked about. All right, guys? So v pretty straightforward considering the situation. The only, the, the clear uh, problem right now is we don't know what direction we're going to go in, but this will give us at least a lens to look through for tomorrow. There will be, some, I'm sure there will be some surprises tomorrow morning in the trade room. So I'll be there with you guys to sort things out. But those are my favorite trades on the S&P uh, here for tomorrow. Let's talk, let's talk NASDAQ. Uh, NASDAQ is a, uh, quite a different looking chart, right? It is quite a different looking chart, but I think you'll see it's got a lot of the same nuts and bolts. It, you know, same fundamentals are in play here. Uh, there are there are two kind of key insights right now on the NASDAQ. One is we are an overall bull bias. You know, on a 60-minute chart right now, this is not a bear market. It's a bull market on the 60-minute. So that is going to be the lens in which I look at this, right? By having some sort of directional filter, you make your job a whole lot easier, in my opinion, right? You're not looking for everything, right? You're only looking for one direction, or you got to have a really good reason to be looking in the opposite direction. Now, the big, big change on this one is, is this one is a bearish market into a trading range. Okay, so we have one of those a little bit confusing scenarios right now where it's short-term bearish, clearly, right, but long-term bullish, at least for now, right? You know, again, we'll, we'll see what happens tomorrow after that CPI number comes up. Anyways, so what, is a, what does a bear market tell us to expect? Well, it tells us that sellers are probably going to be looking to sell short, right, off resistance levels above the trading range, right? You can easily see that prior swing, little channel off that right off that low so it makes perfect sense right now the bears came in and sold off that off that level right this is what they should have done right that, that's that's their job right wait to get up into resistance trap those buyers in and sell right into their stops okay now what should happen next we should rotate right we should end up rotating where roughly about the amount above should rotate down to the amount below okay now think about what this does for the buyers, okay? Buyers, you have to think right now, same big multi-day channel, right? Same big channel we saw on the, on the S&P, pretty much same exact thing. So you gotta think if they finish off this rotation, okay, this is a great spot for buyers to come in and go, oh, I'm at support with a range above, overall bull bias. Now we have to unpack this a little bit, right? Because obviously we're much more bearish in this example on the NASDAQ than we are on the S&P, right? That's one key difference in, in kind of fundamental momentum between the S&P and the NASDAQ. So it's not gonna be the exact same game plan. It'll be similar though, and we'll talk about that here in a moment. So definitely you gotta think buyers buying here, buy, right? You gotta think buyers would love to be buying off that low. And again, the reason why I say buyers is because of that long-term bull bias, right? If I was, if it were, if it were long-term bearish right now, I would not be saying that. I'd be saying, let's sell breakouts right? Let's sell that breakout, right? Like the bull breakout on the S&P. Anyways, so that is what should happen right now. Now think about this more, right? Okay, so now that we know what should happen, what if we didn't happen, right? What if we didn't get that rotation going lower? What if we start going higher here right now? Does it seem like a good idea to sell? No, no, right? Why? Because again, rotation now has failed, we're not a bear market. We're an overall bull market. So if I see this thing start to fail that rotation and make that run higher, okay, take a guess. Take a wild guess. Look at the chart and just think about, we just talked about this. Anytime we see a strong move in one direction, what do we expect? So take a guess. If they fail that rotation, where do you think they're trying to go? Oh, you know where they're trying to go. They're going to they're gonna squeeze this sucker most likely and run this thing right back to that 13, to, right? A lot of times, these things will just zoop, right? And just get sucked right back up to retest the high as all the bears realized they were on the wrong side. So this is a very, as you can see, a very interesting scenario here on the NASDAQ. Uh, you can probably get a little bit more aggressive, right? If this thing does reverse and squeeze, uh, 
running higher here because a lot of times these things just the, the the bears just walk away right now again the variable we have on this is the cpi report unfortunately we have to kind of wait and see how that comes out and then and then go from there let's hope that the cpi report goes lower right before it goes higher right because if it just if it's jack knives and run higher it's like oh well oh well right Okay, so let's talk about this. So if we do get the market going lower, how do you buy this? How do you buy this? And, and this is where the difference is between the S&P and NASDAQ. With this one, this is very bearish at that point. And remember, whenever you, whenever we get a, a kind of a strong move down, we expect what? We expect a pullback and a retest, right? Okay, so knowing knowing that the bears have a little bit more, a little bit more momentum at their back, right? They're a little more, a little stronger than the, than the, than the, than the bears are on the S&P. If we do take out these lows, this is where we call a crown reversal pattern is going to be the is going to be the key here okay if i want to be a buyer right but i'm really really pushing it right against over momentum this is where you use that two try failure right it's a failure pattern but because you've got all of that bear momentum what you want is is you want to get a bear trap Okay. Now there's a lot of reasons, there's a lot of reasons why you need that bear trap. Most of it is because if we if we just simply take a regular failure pattern, right? If we just simply wait for the bears trying once, bears try twice, and we buy into those stops, okay, it works on the SP. But on the NASDAQ, it doesn't work very well because it's so bearish in the short term. Think about it. There could easily be a trend line coming here, a channel coming here, and now you're buying ugh, right into that level, right? So this is this is why, this is why when I have a short-term bear market, but I'm still trying to be a buyer, you need to get those traps, right? The trap is 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 the best solution for this. Because what it does is it gets you in at the right place, right? And again, it's a trap set up. It's just simply the bears trying once, bears trying twice, love to get the higher high on that and that trap. At, with this scenario, you're now getting in, you're already making money on that trade, right? If, if they do come in and they run this thing lower, okay, didn't get the big squeeze I was hoping for, but at least you're not in the red on it, right? You don't want to buy up here. Okay, and get crushed going back down again. Because it could easily retest the low and then do the big one after they retest, right? That double bottom scenario we talked about on the E-mini a bit before, right? So I really, really want that. Again, I call them crown reversals. Okay, you can see how this works, right? They oftentimes will, they oftentimes will chop, pop up, and everybody wants that little trap, right? That trap is oftentimes the best entry, and it's oftentimes the one that kind of rips the cord and just rips going, going higher there. The other scenario is that we get that run going lower, okay? Now they get the pullback, they retest that low. In this scenario now, now we have to assume the bears have come in, and they've already sold this thing now, right? Now they're taking taking their profit at the low. Remember, uh, the professional-ish right bears are selling right here. They'll take their profit at that low. And this is where you can get a little more aggressive, right? We always anticipate when we see a strong move in one direction, we anticipate a retest. Okay, once they retest, we call this mission accomplished, and we can usually get a lot more aggressive, right? Unless there's something else going on uh, that, that we, of course, can't foresee here tonight. But usually this will be, right, one, two, and now I can be a lot more aggressive here because, again, I've already got these bears already baked in. They've already got their short. They've already got their profit. These are the rookies, right? We assume now selling into that low. Rookies have small, tight stops. They're not going to be able to defend themselves, right? And we can squeeze this thing uh, running higher. The best scenario on a double bottom reversal like this is to get this thing to pop up, retest, right? Get them to retest that low. And then as we go in, I get the bears trying once, bears trying twice. Grab, again, run stops, right? Remember, you need those stops as the fuel, and again, it's all because of the short-term bearish momentum. The ideal scenario is, is we have to assume the buyers, well, we have to assume that more sellers are waiting above this high, right? Why? Because this is where bears can get can, can sell high, right? Bears want to sell high. So we assume in this scenario, right, that the sellers are waiting above that high, right? So in order to almost guarantee that reward on the buy side, you buy nice and low, 
right? Let it, right? Let it run back up to retest the high. Take your profit that high. If it keeps on going, for example, we see a lot like this where it'll run lower, right? It'll pull back. It'll retest. It'll, it'll, it'll retest that low. We'll get that. We'll get that one, two off the moving average. We can buy into stops, right? Knowing that that high is likely where more bears are going to come in and try to short this thing. This is where ranges get created, by the way. Remember, ranges act like magnets, right? So one, two, back up into that range again. But if they don't hold it, right? If it simply pops now and begins to grind going higher here, now you know what to do. Find that new channel off the low, off the high, mark it off the low, right? This is that same, this is that same V bottom scenario I talked about earlier, right? This just happens to come after that double bottom. Right, so again, we take some profit off at the right. We get in off the bottom reversal, two tries, run those stops. We know that right, that kind of interim high is where it's kind of baked in, right, for that move back up to take out those highs. Once we get there, do we keep going? Right, if we do keep going, again, we're overall bull bias range above us acts a magnet. We draw that channel off the highs, right? We pin it down at those lows. And then your job, my job, our job tomorrow is to just get simply off that low and try to find any of the entry patterns, right? Could be a trap set up like I love the most. You guys know I love traps, right? So trap set up, a failure pattern. It could be any of those right off the low of that channel. This is really kind of the dream come true scenario, right? Trap the bears in, get the market turning. And then as they break through that key, right, that key overhead resistance, that key level, now everything squeezes, right, the bears are trapped, we're looking for anything to get in off that channel, potentially a very nice reversal, right, back up to levels up overhead. So, and again, and again, uh, like I mentioned on the S&P, right, we may end up V bottoming. This one is a little more difficult to swallow because of the overhead, uh, o overall bearishness. But if we if we begin to see it kind of flutter and run higher like that, chances are this thing got bought up. And now we're going out and we're simply grabbing that first test off that low. Obviously, this one's a little more, again, not the, not the most desirable because you're not getting in, right, very low. But we take what we get, you know, that's, you, you take what you can get, right? This isn't a video game, right? We're trying to, we're trying to make with what, you know, make, make hay with whatever the market uh, gives here tomorrow. Now, the, the final kind of component of this on the NASDAQ is if we don't get that, if we don't get that, uh, that, that rotation, right? If we don't go lower and now the market begins to go higher, you know, really this is almost identical to the same game plan we talked about uh, on the S&P. Oftentimes these things will really zip, right? They'll snap back to that high because you've got, you already have that big move up. Everybody knows where it wants to go. And so a lot of times, you know, the deep pocket buyers, buyers who have a lot of experience and a lot of money in, in, in their accounts, they'll see it pop up and they'll just buy it, right? Right? They're like, well, it's going gonna, it's gonna to end up there eventually, right? The odds of the bears holding that in this scenario are pretty low. They could hold it, right? It's possible, especially around that news tomorrow morning. But ideally, right, it'll pop up, begin to possibly flutter, right, as we go higher, finding new channels, right, and grabbing entries off the low of that channel. It may simply pop up, strong move up, shallow pullback, higher high in price. The key will be traps though, right? That'll be the key. If we end up squeezing, right? If this thing, or or for example, if it was to roll lower and rip right back up again, right? You know where it wants to go. It wants to take out that high. You, you could easily think about a head fake going lower, right? Right, head fakes down, crown reversal, ends up just ripping, right? Popping, and all of a sudden, everyone's like, okay, we know they want to go. Now get me in, right, with possible traps. Get me in with larger channels, right, off of those channels. And I know I'm going a lot right now. There's a lot of scenarios to plan for tomorrow. But again, that's what we have a trade room, right? Tomorrow morning, 8 o'clock Eastern time in the trade room. So keep an eye on that. And then again, if we do end up getting this really, you know, really big, big rip, right? If it really does end up squeezing and running higher here, we're not trying to buy way up here, right? This is where you go out, look for those larger channels, okay? I know it's kind of scary, right? Because you're back at that high again. But if you have all that bullish momentum, right? And overall bull bias, get that, right? Get that pullback, under the moving average, right? Trap in some of those bears, use their stops as fuel for that retest, of, of the high, right? And then again, look for a range.
right? Look for a range there to finish up uh, the session, I would imagine, right? If we get that much movement uh, after that CPI number. All right, guys, so some ideas for tomorrow. And again, we're going to we're gonna buckle the seatbelts tomorrow morning, right? And we'll see how we do uh, on the S&P and the NASDAQ. But again, at least this way, you've got a good head on your shoulders going into tomorrow morning. You know what to, you know, what, 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 some, what, what some scenarios are uh, to keep your eyes on. Uh, over on oil, like I mentioned earlier, oil is kind of the most difficult uh, of all three of these markets right Right now, uh, first of all, we are overall bullish. Uh, no doubt about that. It's difficult to look at a 60-minute or even a four-hour chart and say we're bearish right now. We're bullish. However, we are, well, there's your range. This is kind of the most recent range. It's not the prettiest thing in the world, right? But there's your kind of bullish move up in your trading range. We have now that rotation off the low, right? We call this rotation off the low. What does that rotation off the low tell us? It tells us that, well, we're at resistance right now. It tells us that we could possibly look for a short off the high. But you know, remember, with that overall bull bias, the short off the high, it's, it's, a, it's a gamble, right? It's very much a gamble. Um, it could easily happen, but it's not my favorite trade for tomorrow. Uh, going along the same lines we mentioned earlier, we, we had this failed rotation, right? So we're very bullish right now, at least in my eyes, unless something changes, right? We had this bull move up into a trading range and we just talked about rotation, right? So we go up, we rotate higher. Does that look like rotation to you? It doesn't, right? It's, it's not, right? It's definitely not a completed rotation. So that failed rotation, just like we talked about on the NASDAQ, we're in play right now. So the hardest part right now is, is I'd love to buy this, but I either need one of two things. I need to get, either I need to get more evidence, right? We gotta get going more, right? I have to see a clear breakout of this area. I'm, I'm definitely not looking to buy high, especially around this big top, you know, 8164, 8181, right? So we, so we definitely are looking for that breakout going higher, find some more channels, right? Bolt, you know, traps on the way up, deep pullbacks as we go. Same basic idea we talked about on the S&P um, a bit earlier. The other one is, is if we pull back right now, if we if we pull back right now, what's the what's the challenge? Well, the good part is we're overall bullish and we're short term bullish, right? We have a very strong move higher already. So you know the good news is momentum's at our back. The bad news is we're in a we're in a horrible location to, right to, to be to be a buyer, right? We're we're above the trading range, and so the best way to be a buyer on this, you can see that channel kind of coming in. There could be another channel coming out that area. The best way to buy this is. Uh, because we are into resistance, right? Because we are not in the ideal location to buy it, we have to kind of rope in some of the sellers, right? And let them try to short this thing first. Let them try a couple times, right? Here comes that two try failure again. The reason why I like two try failures in these situations is because it just it just packs a bigger punch, right? It, it, it gives you more fuel to go, in this case, to push through that high here. So strong run up, I'd like to go back and retest the high. I would love to get some of these bears who are trying to short off this. I'd love to get them to, right, to get short and then use their stops as fuel uh, running higher. The best possible entry on this would be a crown reversal, right? So the bears try once, the bears try twice. We've learned about crown reversals already, right? Now, why would a crown reversal be so valuable here? Because we're buying technically pretty high, right? So being able to buy nice and low, that would really be the best way to buy this pullback. It's the only really way to buy the pullback and do it without just kind of gambling. You know what I mean? Because of location and because of the range magnet um, acting above us now or, or below us. Uh, now, the kind of the easier one, right? The the easier one on this is if we keep going higher, right? If we keep on grinding and grinding higher, this is where that same game plan comes in, right? Bear traps on the way higher, right? Once we start getting up a little bit further, right? Now we go, okay, let's find some bigger channels off the high, off the low, start marking up, right? Some of these prior highs, right? Start using some of these prior levels now as support, get that deep pullback get underneath the moving average. Again, Hopefully the bears will take the bait. They sell short, right? Let them try a couple times and literally buy right into those stops. Because again, you've got that strong move, right? Anytime we see a strong move, we are anticipating a retest of that high. 
So this is pretty much the exact same game plan we mentioned earlier on both the NASDAQ um, and the S&P if we do end up, right, going higher, right? In the short term, it's bear traps, right? In the short term, that we are buying as low as possible, right? Once we get up a little bit higher, and again, we'll talk more about how to figure that out in the trading tomorrow morning, right? Then we start waiting for that deep, deep pullback, the deeper pullback after buyers take profit, bigger channel, rope those bears in, and sort of punch it back up uh, to retest the high, okay? Uh, what would a crown reversal look like to sell short? How would you sell short? Again, not my favorite trade, but you look for the buyers once, the buyers twice, right? This is that crown reversal pattern, right? It's just, it's just flipped upside down, right? Remember, overall bull market, short-term bull move here, Buyers try a couple times, that's the short off the high. Now my favorite trade, because again, I like to stick with that overall directional bias. You'll get easier winners, bigger winners. It's less stressful when you go with that directional bias. Um, it does mean sometimes though, you will miss some trades, right? But that's okay. There's no, there's no trophy for the number of trades you take. The goal is make money in the long term, right? Make money consistently every day, every week, every month. And that's where the bull bias, that's, that's where the directional bias really comes in handy, all right? I would love to, if they do get that reversal off the high, I would love to rotate off the high, right? Trap in in some bears and back up we go again right it seems to me like it's a much easier trade to justify buying below than trying to pick the top right in a bull market right this is probably a 35 percent winner right there right probably a 35 maybe a 40 percent winner right in this scenario right now okay this is probably an 80 percent winner which one do you want to build your career on right? Which, which one do you want to focus on? I get it, right? I get it. Even a 35% winner is still going to work 35 out of 100 times. The problem is, is you don't know which, you, that, that isn't good enough, right? So I, I, always, I always have to remind people, even a broken clock is right twice a day. You're going to see low probability trades are going to work sometimes. It's part of the game. Your goal is, is to focus on taking those high probability setups, right? Which means understanding the current market conditions and filtering them, right, with that overall uh, directional bias. All right, that's it for me tonight. Great, great video tonight. Hope you guys learned a bunch. I know I covered a lot of topics. I try to keep things as simple as possible, but I think that was, uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed it here tonight. If you did enjoy the video tonight, make sure you subscribe, hit that like button. Don't forget, if you want more information, uh, free video classes, uh, our, our, our membership uh, uh, to our trade room, um, all the additional time frames are all linked in the description uh, down below. If you got any questions, if you need any help with getting into anything, pick up the phone, give us a call, shoot me an email, uh, use live chat. I'm always here to help out. If you need help along the way, just reach out and ask for it. All right, guys, hope you learned a bunch tonight. Hope you use this knowledge to make a killing tomorrow on CPI Wednesday. And you better come back tomorrow night because when the dust settles, right, we've got reaction Thursday. But we've got PPI coming on Thursday as well. So we got, so we got, so we got a lot more to talk about in tomorrow night's video. I'm out of here for now, though. Be well, be nice to each other, and be here next time. Adios, amigos. Bye-bye for now.